Hello and welcome to Carlos and Lisa. I'm Lisa Romero. And I'm Carlos Amesco. It's nice to have you with us. Uh, today, uh, we're going to talk to Douglas Caballero. He's going to talk about uh, this explosion of music festivals. You know, we have Kaboo, so we have uh, that uh, Woodstock Redux, you, Lollapalooza. Lollapalooza. Of but he's, in, he's working with the Lollapalooza gang. Cool. But we're going to find out what's new with the festivals and how they're expanding and why people are attracted to these things. Awesome. And yeah. we are going to talk to our adventure traveler, King of Phillips. She is going to talk about a really awesome program where you can can take water filters if you're going to travel to a country that might not have clean water you can take these little filters in a bag <laughs> and help that community out and they can have clean water she always for, travels with a purpose doesn't she she always, always has a, like a reason to go somewhere She's to do great. some good or to learn something and bring it back to us so we're excited about that yes okay so let's talk about the story of the day you may have heard about that incident involving R&B singer SZA at a Savora store in Calabasas. She says employees accused her of stealing. SZA says it's a classic case of racial profiling and that of course she is a celebrity and yeah. not stealing at a Sephora store. In fact, she tweeted in part to make sure I wasn't stealing. We had a long talk. So the employees walked up to her and, and accused her of stealing. Mm -hmm. uh, Sephora did apologize and promptly ordered sensitivity training for 16,000 employees to help them understand its values. Am I doing this too much? That's but the truth lot. is, that's that's what they said that they had to do, shut down all the stores and do the do training. This. Okay, so racial profiling and or discrimination in any form has reared its ugly head yet again. You know, you might remember that case of the Starbucks. Oh yeah, the guys, those two guys that were sitting in Starbucks. Starbucks yeah. And then they got, they the employees were like, you're lingering too long. Yeah. But really it wasn't about lingering, it was about perhaps the way they looked. Um, and it has, again, this new issue with SZA has sparked this conversation again about um, racial profiling, about how we treat one another, about the ways to do that, whether it's your own employee or if it's a customer coming yeah, into yeah. your establishment. It's like, uh, partly I think it's a culture. The culture of the organization that, that you're working for, how do they treat your the employees, how do they treat each other, how they expect uh, to treat other customers. I mean, okay, so uh, Chick-fil-A, one of my yes. favorite places. Every, after you're done uh, ordering them, my pleasure, you say thank you, they go, my pleasure. That's a culture thing, right? Mm -hmm. So they've embedded that into the culture. So you wonder if the behavior of some of these employees has something to do with the culture that's been created for them in the employ in, in, the, in the whole employment uh, situation. Well, I'm I'm interested in this whole idea of sensitivity training and whether it is a front for just don't sue us. Yes. <laughs> or if it's a front for this is the motion we should be taking right. and does it really have an impact. Yeah. Well, I mean, SZA could take action and do something. She could. So let's let's talk a little bit more about this because I want to I want to talk to our expert Patty Panici is here with us, and let's let's talk a little bit about what this all means. I mean, we have some facts that we want to share with you about this. I mean, eight billion dollars are spent on diversity uh, training. Is this going to do us any good, Patty? To, Hi, Patty. To, to Hi. train people. Welcome. Nice to have you here. Well, I think a lot of that money is because it's mandated by law now, at least for sexual harassment. Uh, any company that has a certain number of employees or more mm -hmm. must provide that. And if they don't, they're not only violating the law, but they're subjecting themselves to lawsuits because wouldn't you love to get them on the stand? Mm -hmm. Oh, so did you train your employees? No. So I think the big question, though, is whether the training is meaningful. Mm -hmm. And I think that, okay, well, congratulations to Sephora for giving one hour <laughs> and of training. Right. But really, it's going to take more than that. It has to be something that is ongoing when an employee first starts. It has to be, um, you know, they'll, they'll have an initial orientation and something that's ongoing throughout their tenure there mm -hmm. to be meaningful. Mm -hmm. All right, we should probably mention that Patty is a lawyer, you are also a professor, you teach this type of thing at law, at Pepperdine Law, yes. and you are also, of course, a CNN correspondent. So you are well versed in this area that we're talking about today, just to give you guys some context yeah. at home. Um, I wanna talk about that particular thing you just said about how effective is it? How effective is it for a company to train employees like this when companies like Sephora, companies like fast food restaurants turn people over all the time? Yeah, it's probably not as effective as it could be, but the bigger question as well is that they need to train their employees in the context of their jobs. 
you know, everybody's been through training where, you know, you, sometimes you go online or you have a speaker and they just talk generalities. But the security officer they brought over, the employees who asked the security officer for CISA, they need to understand how they might be racial profiling in the context of their jobs. But how do you teach somebody that? How do you train them on <laughs> yeah. that? Yeah, you be a little more creative <laughs> yeah. than these companies you bring in that, you know, one size fits all. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can work at a gas station, a law firm, you know, a law school or a broadcast center and you'll get the same training. Right. You which know. is a problem, yes. right, if you yes. cookie cutter it all the yes. way through. Especially security guards. Yeah, yeah really. so, so let's talk a little bit about culture because culture begins with the company, the, 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 the top executives, and the top executives uh, put out the policies that are going to be followed in a company. And sometimes the top executives have no clue about what we're talking about down here at this level. So it doesn't filter all the way down in the training, and so there has to be some sort of thought process going through to, to make uh, the culture understand that this is the way we behave in the company and this is also the way we treat our customers. Yeah. Why isn't that happening? Sometimes it filters down from the top. And let me give you an example, and this would be Abercrombie and Fritch mm -hmm. and Hollister, which they own. Sure. So they, their whole persona was the all-American look, the football player, mm -hmm. the white football player, mm -hmm. and his beautiful girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So um, they would start hiring people, and they say, if you want to be in the front of the store, either the model standing out front or the salesperson, that's what we're going to look for. And you Latinos, Asians, black people, you, you Filipinos, there was a, a lawsuit, it cost them $40 million. You work in the back of the store because you aren't our look. I mean, wow. that's a blatant example of how it can filter down. But another way that happens is not so much coming from the top, it's just cluelessness or laziness in terms of the, the degree that training is just so important, mm -hmm. so important. I want to ask you on the flip side of it, so in CISA's case, or in the case of those gentlemen who were at Starbucks, what kind of rights do they have? I mean, how okay. do they know what to do if they're in that situation? So do you mean the customers? Yeah, the customer. Okay. So yeah, because the employee, in the, in the um, Abercrombie case, they were employees correct, that were being discriminated. But she would fall under another umbrella of laws called our public accommodations law. In California, it's called the Unruh Act. Um, every state has its own, except there are five states that don't have these laws. Hmm. I think they're Mississippi, Alabama, Texas, mm -hmm. North, uh, anyway, so yeah. it's mostly down south. So in this law, it says any business establishment cannot discriminate against a, a customer uh, based on, and then California, as you might imagine, has the broadest uh, scope of categories for discrimination, uh, race, sex, ge um, sexual, uh, sexual orientation, orientation mm -hmm. uh, religion, you know, and mm -hmm. on and on, <clears throat> disability, age. Uh, so um, that's the law that she would fall under. Right, right, right. So she would have a case in that, if this were to go to trial, that would be the protection that she would fall under. Yes, there okay. are a couple other laws, but they're so obscure and minor that it would basically Got fall it. on the public. There's a lot of legacy law. stuff going on here, uh, obviously because there's there's the, the older generation is, has the civil rights movement in their heads and they're trying to wrap their head around some of the newer things. Are younger people more in tune with that than, than say some of the folks in my generation? I find, because I have watched my law students filter through my classes since 1987. Mm -hmm. That's how long I've been teaching <laughs> these classes. But um, I find that this generation has a high degree of expectation and entitlement to work in a discrimination-free workplace. And I can just tell by their, their degree of, if you will, horror as they listen to these cases we go through, this generation will not put up with it. Well, they very, won't make excuses. That's for it. Interesting. very interesting yeah. conversation. Yeah. Patty, thank you so much for coming appreciate in. We your appreciate that Absolutely. so much. All right. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back.